Welcome to module four. So in this module, we're going to be looking at the Dominion Land Survey System, which is really the beginning of surveying in Alberta. Um, you're, you're going to hear a lot about the Dominion Land Survey System throughout your next two years. So this information that I'm providing you really only scratches like the surface of what is going on. So um, the DLS system started up in 1871. Um, it was a way to divide up the prairie provinces into a very systematic um, system, really. Uh, so, so systematic layout, and because the prairies were relatively flat, so therefore it was easy to divide it up into like squares and rectangles and just make it n nice and easy for everyone to see what they owned and, and how to define it. It also allowed for the equal distribution of land that um, that we needed in there as well. So we still continue to use the DLS system. If you go out into the rural areas, you're going to hear about hear terms that relate to the DLS system, um, and it it really is like a legacy that continues on from our history. So this lecture goes all the way for that's the entire module all in one. So just to bear with me as we go through here. So the um, the beginning of this in 1871, they set out using chains and a surveyor's compass. Now you guys don't have to use this stuff anymore. It's much better equipment than what they used to be. I actually would pull out before kind of the history, uh, an old book that I have that I received from a actually my my husband's grand uh yeah my husband's grandfather so he was a surveyor he did a bunch of work out at barrier lake here in alberta and some of the ground cb and all of those areas so uh, so anyways i got this book from him and in there it really lays out what the life of a surveyor was like so the book is copyrighted to 1905 and it um part of it in fact, this is in a textbook, so this is in a surveying textbook from 1905, and it starts, it goes through everything that, the mathematics that we still use today, because really a triangle is still a triangle. A triangle that was like back in 100 AD is still a triangle today. So the mathematics behind it is very, is, is pretty much identical. The, the differences is dealing with how the earth changes over time. So we have um, in 1905, the, like the math is all the same. Obviously, we don't need to use the sun's angle to figure out where we are anymore because we now have GPS. But the original layout, they had to use the sun. They had to use the um, Polaris, which is like the North Star. Um, you, they really had to figure out, okay, where is the North Pole? And they had to do all the math with that. So it was an incredibly challenging type of career to get into. But on top of that, these these were all men. So I apologize to the women that this, and I'm taking a very settler's point of view at this, in this point. So um, I, again, based on the indigenous background of this, um, I, I'm not gonna be discussing that. So I'm putting a little limitation on that. But, so these guys would have to do all that math and learn and try to figure out where they're located by using math. And then on top of that, they had to know everything about survival. So we're not talking about just going out and taking like avalanche training. We're talking about what do you do if you get um, dysentery or what happens if you drown or so, like your, your coworker drowns? How do you pack a mule so that the mule can actually help you in your survey? And, and so on, right? So how, how do you pack your food? Well, how do you ration your food throughout the day so that you can last a week with the food that you have? All of that, they had to know. Nowadays, they'll helicopter you in, drop you off, and pick you up at the end of the day. <laughs> so we have a very, very different um, survival technique than what we used to. So the, the, these guys, would, uh, if they had a tent that they would go back to, um, or like a small cabin, they had to know how to knit, they had to know how to sew because they repaired all of their own clothing, which was an unusual skill for a man back then. Um, because the woman would stay at home. If they were married, they would, the woman would do all of that. 
So most of these men were probably single and they basically devoted their life to land surveying. So um, getting into the where the Dominion Land Survey is applied. So here's the DLS system. So we start over here on the east side and the east side is starts at 97 degrees 27 minutes 28.4 seconds west. Now that is in um, that is the value of the, the longitude value. And um, we call this one the first meridian or the prime west meridian. So this diagram is incorrect in how it's drawn. So it should say prime west because the prime meridian is actually located in Greenwich in the United Kingdom. And this is, so the first meridian of the DLS system, and it's also known as the Winnipeg meridian as well. So, so it's got a few names, but it's located just west of Winnipeg. And um, it goes between the 49th parallel, which is that, anything south of that is the US, and the 60th parallel, which is the Arctic Circle value. And then, we move over to the second meridian, which it is now not a funny number because this one's kind of a funny number. Then they move to a funny number or less less funny number uh, at 102 west. And then it goes four degrees to 106, another four degrees to 110, four degrees to the fifth meridian. Um, and then the sixth meridian is another four, so we're at 118. The final meridian in the DLS system is at 122 degrees west. So our boundaries for the DLS system is our first meridian at 97 degrees, 27 minutes, 28.4 seconds west. And then it's at the seventh meridian, it's enclosed to the seventh meridian at 122 degrees west. And then it's also bound on the north and south side uh, the 49th parallel at the south side and the 60th parallel in the north side. So once we've created these boundaries, then we, cre we created, or they created, <laughs> townships and ranges. So we can see on this diagram that I have the first meridian that's defined, and then I have boxes that are coming off. So ranges are along the horizontal, so they're going east to west, and the range it would count up. So we'd start range one down here and count up to two and then three. Notice that it's range one on the west side of the meridian, and then it counts over to the west. So that, that's important. And then we have our townships, which start at the bottom and they count upwards. And the township values are along the vertical axis. So the range lines are where the, the, we switch from range one to range two. They were six miles apart or 486 chains apart. So that is the distance for a range. And then townships as well, uh, they were also six, six miles, but they are 483 chains apart in Alberta. I will get to that difference. I'll, t I'll explain why these three chains is, it, 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 it exists, even though it both says six miles. Um, I, will, I will explain that once we get into the, in, into like the different town, or sorry, the different survey systems, which comes later. But for now, you just need to know that the range lines are, are six miles and the township lines are also six miles. Oh. So if we're going to work in, into the townships, here is a township itself. So what we, even though the township numbers and township lines go from, they run east-west or they are increasing going north, the township number <coughs> and the range number create what we call a township. Now in one township, we have 36 sections and that's what each of these little squares are in here. So the 36 sections is divided up um, and each of these, because it is six miles by six miles, it is each of these are one mile by one mile. Note the counting system. So it, it is actually an important thing in, in the DLS system. So the town, or sorry, the section one, just like township and range one, so township one, 
um, is always in the bottom right hand corner. It counts up to the left and then it goes up and then it counts back and then up and then back. So it's like, it's like a mirrored snakes and ladders. If, um, and no, normally in class, I would ask you guys, what would, uh, why would that be? Why would we start the counting in the bottom right hand cor corner and then count across and then snake our way up? The answer to that is the fact that the, most of the settlement started in the east and moved to the west. So it made sense to start here and continue on. Also, it would, as we went north, there were fewer people, so they didn't have to do it as quickly, but they would snake back and forth in order to save time and make it efficient. So that would, that's part of the reason why it was like that. So our, going back to the distances, if we have six miles times six miles, we get 36 miles squared for an area. So then we've got our sections. So here is my section. I've, I've, I've got my township. I break it up into my sections. and I'm going to take a look at a section. So in this example that we've separated out, we have what we call legal subdivisions. And so each section, which is one mile by one mile, is broken up into 16 subdivisions. Again, counting the same way. One, two, three, four, starting with one in the bottom right-hand corner and back and forth all the way up. So each of these is a quarter of a mile by a quarter of a mile, each legal subdivision. Okay. So going back here, we it's the same thing as what I just had. And then we have what we call a quarter section. So there's two different ways to separate up the section. Um, the first one, like I said, was a LSD, so legal subdivision. The second way we can separate up a section is in quarter sections. So here we have uh, like the southeast corner, the southwest, the northwest, and the northeast corner. And these are the quarters that, um, <coughs> sorry, these are the, the quarter sections. So they don't count, like you don't count the numbers on the inside. It is actually these darker values that we have on the outside. A quarter section is always represented as northwest or northeast or southwest or southeast. There is no number associated with it. Where the legal subdivision is an actual number. So the quarter section is a half mile by half mile and the legal subdivisions is a quarter mile by a quarter mile, so they're half the size. So then moving into our next objective, which is explain the use of baselines and correction lines. So we have these really nice squares. We've broken up our township, or our whole land, into townships, which are supposed to be square, or close-ish to squares. And then we're going to separate those up into sections. And then we're going to separate those up into either LSDs or into quarter sections. But we have an issue. Because as we go north, my lines of longitude are actually converging. So the convergence is coming, and they're making everything smaller and smaller and smaller. So that means that in order to maintain things being square, because it's really not fair. Let's say I show up to Alberta here back in 1890, and I'm going to get, let's say, that where, where the 17 is. And then my neighbor comes along, and they want to get where 20, section 21 is. Well, or not section, these are actually townships. So they're in township 21. Their, their actual land it will be significantly smaller than mine. And so that because they were offering settlers the same kind of benefits, they couldn't just reduce it because you were moving north. In fact, it should have been the opposite, really, right? Because it's not like the growing season is much better north than it is south, but that's the way it goes. Um, so instead of having to reduce everybody's land as we go north, they wanted to maintain the square shape. So they added in something called a correction line. So they use baselines and correction lines. So baselines is really just defining where 
um, like a kind of like an index. So it's kind of like a contour, index contour. Saying so here we're at like the first one, then we're at the second one. Um, so the baselines provide us with that, and then the correction lines fall right in the middle. So every four uh, townships, we have another baseline. So, but if I have a baseline, then I go up two, and then you will find a correction line. Then I go two, and then a baseline. Then two, then a correction line, all the way up to the 60th uh, parallel. So here we see, that, like this is what will happen if we didn't correct, so we'd have get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But here now, if we put in a jog, which pushes out the boundary at the correction line on the north side of the correction line, we have this little jog, and notice how this is so much more square than this one. So every township line north of the 40, or 49 degrees, and every fourth after. So if this was the 49th parallel, we go up two and we have a correction line. Okay, so baseline, correction line. Then we'd have a baseline in here and another correction line. Then a baseline and so forth all the way up. So that's how that counting system works to, to look for your correction lines. So each of these jogs is 225 feet, but that is right after the meridian. As soon as you go past that meridian, at the correction line, that jog increases as you go west. And it's like incremental. So this, you know, you keep moving up 225 um, feet. Did I say degrees last time? <laughs> For some reason, I think I said degrees. Anyways, okay. So, so 225 feet and keeps increasing as we keep going west. And then as once we hit the next meridian, then we reset and then we do it again. So it's always reset right after this meridian, any meridian that we come across. So as I said, there we go. So again, there's the correction line going across. We have it increasing as we go. And then it goes. So here we're seeing the, the 49th parallel and then the correction line, right? 49th parallel and then the correction line, then it would be baseline, correction line, baseline, correction line. So, so there's a further correction that needs to happen. So we see this, we see keep going up and we're at Old Wives Lake here at the third meridian. And we come up and all of a sudden it disappears. Like at 15, at town, uh, Township 15, it completely disappears. So we have to adjust for that and, and keep that in mind as we work through it. So here's what happens. So as we move up, here's my full township. I keep going up. And then what I start doing is dropping the number of, of, of sections that I have within the township. So I don't want to make the actual section smaller. I actually just remove them so they, they don't exist anymore. So down here I've got like six, I've got full 36 sections. Up here I have now reduced it down to, uh, to six. So times four would be 24. So it's 24 sections in this township. So if I, if you were to show up as a settler and they said, oh, you get um, section six of this township, it doesn't exist, so you would actually have no land. So they had to be very careful about that as well when, when they were dealing with the legalities of this system. So why is this important? Because possibly next summer you're going to be going out and you're going to be working in maybe the oil patch or maybe you're working in a rural area and you need to find monuments. Well, in surveying you may have covered already what a monument is. But a monument helps define the boundary of a property. So when we place bound or monuments, it tells me where does something start and stop. So in this case, and I'm uh, this actually there's actually a difference as we move through to the different um, survey systems, and, and I'll get to those. But these black spots are where we placed 
are monuments. So let's say you have to, you get sent out to section 22 and in this township and you show up there, you got to drive along, you show up here. Where are you going to look for the boundary monuments so that you can set up and get moving and do your survey? So you are going to look along the west limit. Oops. Let's go back. You're going to be looking at the west limit of the the of the north south road, so along here on the on the west. And you're going to look at the south side of the road, so it's always down here. If you find a monument up here, then you're probably on a correction line. But otherwise, these these monuments is where you're going to find them on the on the west side. So here it goes again. So on along the west limit of the road allowances, that's what RA stands for, on the north south lines. So N slash S stands for north south all the way down there. Then it is also along the south limit, as you can see, you can see them along there. You can also see that these monuments are placed at the quarter section lines. Okay, that's important to remember. So we have the full section and then we have the quarter sections that are m monumented along the s south and west lines. Then we have between sections. So Along here, so you can see here that we have our quarter sections marked and then we have the line of between sections. Well, what is important is in, in our in Alberta is that we have something called a blind line. So these double lines that you see going down and across, those are all roads. A blind line is where there is no road. So if you're having to look for one of these, you're going to have to get access to that um, a, probably along a property boundary and not through a road. So when we say between sections, we're going to see them along blind lines and we're going to see them at quarter sections as well. <coughs> so if you are at a correction line, guess what? You get them along both sides of the road. The reason being is because of this jog that's happening, so it needs to monument that for us so that we can identify it. So um, so that is one, the one exception to that east-west line where you have it on both sides of the road. So then we get to compare the three systems of surveys. So there's a few differences that happen here, and that's not just specific to the monuments, but it does happen. So the first and second systems of survey, are, you're going to find those in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Uh, we don't have any of the second systems of survey in Alberta, or if we do, there's very few. <laughs> in fact, I don't know of any, but maybe Lee does because he's he's the land surveyor. So this first system was put into place in 1871 to 1881. And so if you see here, we have a road allowance of one and a half chains. That's important. We also had roads around every single one of our sections. And notice that it actually made a perfect square. So we had 489 chains by 489 chains. The, we had perfect squares of everything. Each section was 80 by 80 chains, and the quarter sections were 40 by 40 chains. Everything was like a perfect square in the first and second systems of survey. There is a difference between the first and second um, in terms of some other aspects. I'm not going to get into those in this class because that is more of a cadastral class question. But just so you know, you're familiar that the first and second systems of survey, they are making perfect squares with one and a half chain road, road allowances, and they are um, they've got roads all over, all, all the way around the the sections. So in the third system of survey, this is what we have in Alberta for the most part. This started after 1881, so they'd made this adjustment. The road allowances shrunk. They got smaller to 1.0 chains wide. We also have now a blind line between every two um, section instead of a road. So it made it smaller. Why is this helpful? Well, we could get more people onto the prairies, right? We can now use more land for property 
and maybe squeeze in that little bit extra of a section at the very top or on the very left side of the province to be able to get more people in. So you can see here that now this is where the, or the, the townships are different sizes. So going east, or sorry, north-south, it's 483 chains. Going east-west, it's 486 chains. The reason there is a difference here is because of not only that this road allowance, so each road allowance is one chain, but we have blind lines. So these are not one chain wide, they are an infinitely small line. So if I remove one, two, three chains of road allowance, that's why I have 483 chains along the side there. So that's what makes the difference. So if we're looking at a township plan, we're going to get a lot more information into these as we, um, and when we move into the map reading uh, module. But I just want to point out a couple things here to look at and things that are really important. So for example, here we have the people who did the survey. This bottom thing, the, the bottom like piece, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? block the bottom block is like really important it's like the most historical part of the entire map so we have the name of every single surveyor that was out there how cool is that like who did what's the chances that this oj Klotz thought in 1883 that he would be on a some sort of like crazy wild magic system that a instructor at SAIT, which didn't even exist back then, some college, that he would be like brought up on screen with his name there showing that he was like the first surveyor coming out in this township. Like it's pretty cool, like you like go down in history because of that. So you can see it started in 1883 all the way up to 1909. It actually became confirmed and registered as of April 1910, so June 15th, 1909, and the 29th of April, 1910. It took almost a year to become registered. So <clears throat> that's something to keep in that they like, to to keep in mind, right? There was a huge gap between here and here. The reason being was because back then. If you didn't just email it or upload it to the internet, you had to actually send it back. And they didn't have vehicles to really do any kind of heavy work in 1909. So it was all by horse and buggy or boat. So that's how, and then they would do that. Because this is in Alberta, and it was in Ottawa that they had to get it out there. So that's um, kind of some neat history behind this bottom part here. And why is this important? Because when we get into the, the, the monuments of this, then that's where it really starts to count. So here, again, here's my township plan for the third system of survey after 1881. Nothing has changed with that diagram. So in the first and second systems of survey, the road allowances are one and a half chains wide, where here it's only one. The correction lines and blind lines were added in the third system. So if you go back to the first and second system, you're not going to find correction lines. But now in the third system, there is. And you won't find blind lines either in the first and second system. We do here. So now before I get to that, I want to go back to here. Oh, go back to my, my thing here. So another thing that's important about these, this township plan is that after 1915, it, this information, going back to the blind line, the blind line was not monumented before 1918. So if you go to 1918, then you'll see that the, now this is starting to be monumented. Anything before that, though, was not monumented. So that red dot going all the way back to here, these red dots were monumented in 1918. Otherwise, they did not exist before that. 
So if you have to, as in you in your workbooks there, you're going to have to identify the monuments where they were placed. If you were looking at this, we have to go down here. It says 1910. It was before 1918. So therefore, the monuments are not going to be found along the blind lines. So something to keep in mind when you go to work in, in your activity books there. These are sections. These numbers are all the sections. And these thicker lines, these are the roads. And then these lines are the blind lines between the ones that are numbered. So when you are going to place your monuments in here, you're going to be placing them on the southwest corner, right? For That's where they are, southwest corner along all the road allowances. And then because this is before 1915, there is no monument in between, like along the blind line, in between the sections, okay? But it is still monumented at the, the road, at, or sorry, yeah, so at the road here. So it's along the west side of the road. It's still going to be found in this corner here, just not in the center. So important, that's an important factor to know. So going back to township addresses. So how township addresses work is that we have a, a saying. And that saying is quality surveys take real money. And when I say that, I am referring to the fact that <laughs> we have that that's an acronym that's what I'm referring to so let me just in this and I'm going to pull up my sketch pad and write this out so we have quality surveys take real money. Okay, so this is the saying and what these represent, this is my acronym, I have my quarter section, my section, my township number, my range number, and my meridian. So, so that is for quarter sections. This is called a township address. If you have an LSD instead of a quarter section, you can say legal surveys take real money. So L stands for LSD surveys is my section. T is my township. R is my range. And money is meridian. So this is also a township address. It just depends on what you own. So an example of a quarter section, northeast, northeast quarter of section five in township let's say eight, township eight, range four west of the fourth meridian. That's how you really write it out the long way. If we want to make it shorter, we can actually shorten it down. North, east, of five, eight, four, four. So this is how, this is like the long way. This is the short way the short address. 
if we were to look at LSDs, we could be like 10, LSD 10 of section 5 in township. 8, we'll stick to the same numbers here, range for west of the 4th meridian. Okay, so this is again, this is a long address. If we want the short address, it's 10, 5, 8, 4, 4. Short address. So that you can see the difference between the township address and, or so the, the quarter section address and the the LSD address is really only that first this first component here. So we have that one and we have this one. So if you see an E, you know, or like or SW, NW, SE. That's the quarter section, right? Where here you can go up to 16. It has to be less than 16. <laughs> Any number of 16 or equal to, I should say equal to. The 16 and under, if you see a number, therefore you're dealing with a legal subdivision. Okay, now let's... So if we go down to where we were, there we go. Okay, so here, if I am looking at my third system of survey, which the numbering still works all the same. And let's say I, oh, and uh, let me switch this around because I've got the, <laughs> the wrong screen in the wrong spot. <laughs> All right. If I want to try to figure out what where this red square is. So what is my legal description or the, the township address? This is, let's count, one, two, three, four, five. So it is my fifth section and it is in the northwest quadrant. So my legal description is Northwest Quarter, Section 5, Township 3, Range 4, West of the 4th Meridian. Okay. So that's how you count that, or in shorthand, NW5344. If I go to the next system here, let's say I have one that's a little square in my system. I am going to count. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this, ha this is all in section 9. And this is a little LSD. So we count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's because this is in the LSD location 10, it must start with a 10 and it must be 9 for the section. So showing it here, showing the section, breaking it up into LSDs. See it like I was mentioning before, so we can count over. The legal description of this is LSD 10, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then section 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Township 10, because it says Township 10 here, it says Range 8 here, and I would tell you which meridian you are at, or you would, you would see that on the map if you were reading a map. So that's how you identify legal descriptions, um, and so versus LSD versus the, um, the LSD versus the quarter section. So with that, you do have a, your activity book, so make sure you take a look through that and work through those activities, especially with the, um, the monuments and identifying the legal descriptions. And that is everything for the DLS system. So we will be in contact, we will continue, I guess we'll see you, see you, I guess, whatever we call it, online here in, um, 
in the next module.